Hello everyone, this is Jacob Ames, Applications Engineer with Hawkridge Systems, here today with part two of our SOLIDWORKS Basics for New Users series. In this video, we'll introduce you to several sketching tools and techniques and provide you with the understanding you need to start building your own designs. Before getting into this video, we do recommend, if you haven't seen it yet, to check out part one of this series to get up to speed on the basics of the SOLIDWORKS user interface. Now, a sketch is almost always the first step in designing a new part. So to begin, we need to start with a new part file. Once the user interface is visible, we need to navigate to the Sketch tab of the Command Manager. From here, the very first icon will allow you to start a sketch. And I want to make sure that you don't click the down arrow underneath the sketches. That just gives you access to 3D sketches, which we're not covering here. So make sure to click that sketch icon. And by the way, if you have trouble finding any of these commands that we talk about in this video, just remember you can search for SOLIDWORKS commands using the search bar. Simply click the down arrow on the right hand side of it, choose commands, and then type in the command of your choosing and you'll have direct access to it there. Once we click the sketch icon, we'll see that all the default planes in the part are visible. Now these are only visible because this is our first time creating a sketch, uh, but they will still be available after we've created our first sketch. So at this point, simply click the plane of your choosing. And it doesn't really matter in this example, but it is important to select the right plane to make sure that your views are set up properly. So we use the front plane just by clicking on it. And once the plane has been selected, the view orientation is automatically going to rotate normal to the plane. And we've entered sketch mode. It's important to understand when sketch mode is active because many commands can only be used in sketch mode and vice versa. There are many that can only be used outside of sketch mode. So there's several indicators that sketch mode is active. The first is that the origin is red when normally it's blue. We also get a confirmation corner in the top right with this blue sketch icon. We then have replacing the sketch icon exit sketch. And you can use this to exit the sketch. You can also use the confirmation corner to exit the sketch and either save or cancel those changes. The red X would cancel them. All right, so we know we're in sketch mode. And again, this is really important for a number of reasons, but one that I really like to mention is with dimensions. Uh, dimensions can be added both in sketches and outside of sketches, but 99% of the time, you're going to want to add them in the sketch because otherwise they won't constrain any sketch entities. So anytime you're adding dimensions, almost without exception, you want to make sure that you see these indicators, red origin, confirmation corner, exit sketch button, and that way you'll make sure that you're adding them properly. Now at this point, we're ready to begin sketching. On the left hand side of the sketch tab, we have a group of icons here that are our sketch tools. And there's several here. I encourage you to experiment with them, but we're going to start off with the most basic, which is the line. So we're going to click the line command to begin. You don't have to worry about the property manager over here on the left. Um, you can just go ahead and begin sketching. And the first thing we want to mention is that it's important to make use of the origin in some capacity, especially in your first sketch. Now you don't have to necessarily be connected to it, but you have to reference it in some way. So we're going to reference it directly. When I hover my cursor over the origin, we'll see a yellow icon appear, and this is a sketch relation. It's called an automatic sketch relation, and this is going to force us to remain coincident or effectively locked to the origin with the start point of our first line. I'm going to left click and release the mouse button. And then as I move my cursor away, you can see the line extending from the origin. Now, as I approach horizontal or as I approach vertical, you'll notice the line sort of snap into place and another yellow icon will appear. This is the horizontal constraint. So if I click here, it'll, SOLIDWORKS automatically recognizes that I want to keep this line horizontal and it'll force that orientation no matter what, although it will not control the length. Now you'll also notice a number on my cursor. This indicates the current length of the line, but it is not a constraint. So I'm about 50 millimeters long right now, but if I click and place this, I'll still be able to drag the line around. If you want to fix the length of something or the distance between two sketch entities, you have to use dimensions or other sketch relations. Once we're happy with this line, I'm going to left click and release once again, and I'm going to create another line down and to the right. 
Now you'll see some orange lines protruding in space. There's a lot of graphical feedback in SolidWorks that's really helpful for picking up other relations. So I can snap to horizontal, I can snap to uh, vertical or vice versa there. And um, those are really nice because they'll actually follow the line. So when I click to place this next line with just a left click and release, notice how those lines change. And your colors may be a little bit different. Uh, don't let that concern you. I have mine modified a little bit. So I've just created another line down into the right. I'm going to come back and make sure that I'm horizontal for this next one. And this third line, I want to make sure that I have a blue reference line showing and connecting to the origin. These blue reference lines don't actually automatically add relations, but they're good for lining up geometry. This is going to make sure that when I place my last line, that I'll be able to both be vertical and connected to the origin. So I'm going to left click and release once again. And by the way, if at any time you want to stop this chain of lines, you can simply right click and choose end chain. You can also use the escape key, but when you do this, it'll actually kick you out of the line command. If that ever happens, you can simply click the line command once again and resume sketching. It doesn't all have to be done at the same time. So if I ever need to resume, I'm just going to left click on the last endpoint that I created, and then we're going to close this shape up at the origin. Once you connect a shape like this and you have a whole polygon, by default, your shape should be shaded. Um, if it's not, don't worry. It's, not, it's usually not in earlier versions as well. That's a, a new option for 2018, but that'll let you know that your shape is closed. And when you close that polygon up, it should automatically stop creating lines for you. At this point, we can click the check mark in line properties to end that command. You may have to do it twice. And we have our first sketch. Now you'll notice that we have a variety of colors in this sketch. Some of our line segments are black, some of them are blue, and what do these mean? Well, this indicates the status or the state of our sketch, and right now it's only partially defined. Eventually, at the end of this, we want all of our line segments to be black. This will ensure that we can't accidentally make unintended changes to our sketches. We always want to have fully defined sketches uh, before we send off for production. And uh, one way you can test the definition is by left clicking and dragging essentially anything that is blue. And what you'll find is as I drag endpoints, um, our sketch is going to change. Anything that's blue is going to be able to change. So the length of our horizontal and vertical lines, but you'll notice that any sketch relations that we automatically created with those yellow symbols, particularly vertical and horizontal, those are going to be preserved. So it takes a combination of sketch relations and dimensions to fully define this. We want to get the size and the relative behavior of these sketch entities. And so we did capture some of those automatically while sketching, but we may need to capture more. And if you need to capture more sketch relations, it's very easy to do. Just click the sketch entity that you want to add the relation to. And then in the property manager on the left hand side of the screen, you'll see add relations. And depending on what you have selected, you'll have different options here. Right now, I just have the horizontal line selected. Um, if I were to hold control and click the vertical line and you hold control to make sure that you're selecting multiple entities instead of just one, you'll see we have different relations available. So depending on what you select, you'll have different options. Additionally, you can see some green markers on the sketch entities. As we click them, those green markers appear. Those indicate the sketch relations that are already applied to those entities. Um, and the reason that I like to click and drag the blue entities is because it helps me understand what is still underdefined, and it gives me ideas as to what I can change or add uh, in order to fully define this. Now, in this case, we don't need to add any more sketch relations, uh, but if we did, we just covered how we could do that. Now we just need to add dimensions to get the sizes correct for all of this geometry. Now, to add dimensions, we use the Smart Dimension tool. That's right here in the Command Manager. You're looking in the Sketch tab. Again, you want to make sure that you're in Sketch mode, so look for those indicators, Red Origin, Confirmation Corner, and the Exit Sketch button. As long as you see those, go ahead and click the Smart Dimension command. Once this is active, you can begin selecting entities. So I'd like to dimension the height of this design, so I'll click the vertical line. One thing you want to look out for, you don't want to accidentally click a midpoint, or uh, you may not want to click an endpoint. In many cases, we do like to use these, but if you're trying to get the length of a line, for example, you want to make sure to click somewhere in between the midpoint and the endpoint, so you don't actually accidentally get something you don't want. Once you click a line, 
it will appear as though the dimension has been placed, but this is actually a preview of the dimension because in some cases you may want to use this line we have selected in combination with something else. So if I wanted to, I could still go click another entity and this would give me a completely different preview. So that preview that you see, uh, once you're happy with it, go ahead and click to place that preview on the screen and this modify dialog will come up. This will allow you to type in a new value. You can also play around with some of these uh, commands that are available here for rebuilding or say flipping the dimension, but we're gonna keep it pretty simple here. We're gonna type in a new value of 20 and we're going to click OK. Now the first dimension that you create, it's gonna look like it didn't do anything. That's actually because SOLIDWORKS automatically scales your sketch after you create your first dimension. So any subsequent dimensions that we create are going to actually change the sketch. So we'll go back into the Smart Dimension tool and we're going to get the width of this design now. I'm just left clicking the single horizontal line down there at the bottom. I'm clicking to place the dimension and I'm going to type in 50. And this time you'll actually see this, the sketch stretch out a little bit. And as we add these constraints, we're seeing uh, other aspects of our design uh, turn black. So now we have three out of four lines that are black. And the last thing that we need to do is constrain, the, it's highlighted right now, this orange line, this angled line. And we can do that with an angular dimension. Now, as I mentioned, some dimensions require you to select more than one single entity. And an angular dimension is one of those. So we'll get to that in a second. One thing I want to point out, when I go to make a selection, if I'm not constrained already to horizontal or vertical like I was with my last two lines, there may actually be multiple previews that I can access. This would capture just the horizontal aspect of this line. This would capture just the vertical aspect. And this preview would capture the linear length. So you need to be clear uh, and make sure you get the correct preview when you're placing these dimensions, all right? So I need two selections here. I need the line that I currently have selected and to get the angle, I'm gonna ignore that existing preview. I can ignore this completely and then just go click the additional entity that I want to add. And you'll see that in this case, it automatically converts it to an angular dimension. We call it the smart dimension tool because SOLIDWORKS can automatically infer what kind of dimension you're trying to create based on the entities you select. Now that I have an angular dimension, I'll simply click to place the preview. And again, we have multiple previews. So we wanna make sure to get the internal angle here by hovering the cursor on the inside. And I'm gonna set this to 45 degrees. You don't have to worry about units. Uh, it takes care of that for you automatically. Although if you want to, you can access other units. We'll click okay. And at this point, everything is fully defined. So pretty easy. We're good to go here and we can create a feature with this sketch, but there is something that, a couple things that I wanna cover first. What if we want to edit a dimension? It's actually very easy to do. We can simply double click the value and the modify dialog will come back up. We can make our changes and we can click okay. If you want to delete a dimension, however, naturally you'd want to come click the value, but you'll actually find that when you do that, you get a modification window. So when you want to delete a dimension, make sure that you actually click the leader of it, either the arrows here or the lines, and then you can press the delete key on the keyboard, or you can right click this area and choose delete from the shortcut menu, and it will remove that dimension. The same thing is true for sketch relations. Those can be deleted as well. When you click a line segment, the green symbols that represent the sketch relations can be right clicked, and you can delete those, or of course use the delete key on the keyboard. The final thing that I wanna mention about the Smart Dimension tool is uh, managing multiple selections. We often use the escape key in order to uh, exit commands. And when you try to do that in the Smart Dimension tool, it doesn't exit the command, but rather it removes the last selection that you've made. So when I press the escape key, I still have two items selected. It just removed that last selection that I made. If I press the escape key again, it does the same thing. It just removes the selection. So my personal recommendation, if you're trying to end the smart dimension command, rather than using escape, come back up to the command manager and click the smart dimension icon once again to turn it off. Now at this point, our sketch is complete. We're ready to create our first feature. So we'll go ahead and use the confirmation corner here. We wanna make sure to click the blue icon to save all of our changes. And once that's done, we can go directly to the Features tab and choose Extruded Boss Base. This is one of the most common features in SOLIDWORKS. 
And when we do this, it'll automatically rotate to an isometric view and show us what this feature is going to look like. Now we're not gonna dive into features too much here. If you're interested in features, make sure to check out part three of our series. And we'll use the default settings here. Go ahead and click OK and you officially have your first SOLIDWORKS part. One other thing I wanna mention here, um, oftentimes we'll see something like this when we have a sketch that somehow got deselected after it's been created. Our users will then come over to features and choose the extruded boss command and they'll be presented with a dialog like this. And the very first option here tells you to select a plane to sketch the feature cross section. Well, we just did that, right? Um, if you look closely though, the second option says that we can also use an existing sketch for this feature. So if this message comes up, it's actually very easy to deal with. Simply click the sketch in the feature manager design tree and uh, you're right back to the feature and you can go ahead and create that. So don't panic when you see that message. The last thing I wanna mention here is that if you ever accidentally exit a sketch while it's in progress or if you need to modify a sketch after a feature's already been created, that's very easy to do as well. You have to start this from the feature manager design tree. Here you'll see the boss extrude feature listed just under the origin and I can simply right click this and use the second icon in the context menu to edit the sketch. This will take us back into sketch mode and we can make any adjustments as needed. Additionally, you can access this from the sketch itself. So if you don't have a feature yet, the sketch will be visible with, it won't be nested underneath a feature. You can just right click that sketch and this will actually be the first icon instead of the second icon and it'll take you to the same place. So you can always make adjustments and get back into the sketch whenever you need to. In this video, we covered the basics of sketching in SOLIDWORKS to get you up to speed and ready to create your first SOLIDWORKS feature. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, subscribe, or visit us at hawkridgesys.com. And again, be on the lookout for part three of this series where we examine features and show you how to get even more complex geometry uh, and even more exciting designs. Thanks for watching and see you next time.